Welcome to the Tom Castro Shooting Academy podcast. You have now entered the next level. Let's get into the next one. So I would love to talk about the match, your your nationals versus your locals, and like kind of where did you come up with a list of things from nationals that you don't really see at locals, like things that you really need to now make a priority in your in your shooting. So Ryan or uh, Daniel, go. Yeah, I got a list. It's somewhere around here. Uh, <laughs> How many pages? I got, I got many pages. I needed more paper. I got a whole notebook. <laughs> I, got a whole book. I got a whole book of notes right here. <laughs> nah, um, yeah, definitely the distance I already talked about. Um, uh, honestly, clear malfunctions. I know that like might sound like like weird because like, oh, well, you don't plan on having a malfunction, but I mean, dude, I spent like nine seconds clearing my functions. And it's, you know, like like when I think back on it, um, and that was just one, my, like literally one. It took nine seconds to clear my function because, mm-hmm. I, and, and t- something Tyler's talked about before. Um, but anyways, that's just something I got to work on. I got to throw in some snap caps and just like make it unexpected and just clear it. And because uh, what I do is I get frustrated and I'm like, oh, well, there went that stage. So then I just like. <laughs> take my time like clear and i'm just pissed the whole time I, I swear you guys are looking at me like what is he doing that's that local <laughs> that's that local mindset bro where, where yeah, it's like oh yeah. it doesn't matter like, it's just it, a local yeah yeah and if you throw one stage at local like it's over yeah and mm-hmm. um you know if you can't sit there and afford to like just throw four five six seconds down the drain just because you're you're pissed off so Dude, that turns um, into an ass whooping at nationals yeah. Right. Like yeah. you don't realize like, so uh, a good example yeah. is I bet you that dropped you 40 spots. Oh dude, <clears throat> it was easily it, like, and <clears throat> I had two Charlies on the stage. Like, now imagine, was... imagine the 40 people that beat you aren't even good enough to beat you. It took a jam oh, that yeah. bad, but you literally go, eh, I don't care here. Take, take some extra time. You know, like let's make this harder to, to have a good match. Right. Yeah. So never quit, dude. That's a big thing with me, man. I don't give a shit if I shoot, if I have to rack the gun every single time I am not, I'm dude, I'm coming up with some amazing times still. Cause I'm not going to quit. I don't give a shit. If I have a jam on every bullet, I'm going to, I'll never forget it, man. Area six. I had a jam. Uh, I broke a, a um, firing pin in the middle of the match uh, in the middle of the stage. Dude, I think I had like 15 rounds. I had to still, I had 15 bullets. I still had to shoot. I racked half of my magazine out. It would work. Boom. Click nothing. Rack. Boom. Click. Boom. Click. Boom. Click. Boom. And I finished the stage and I won the match by five points because I didn't quit on that stage. If I would have taken zero on that stage, uh, which I basically did anyway, but because I I shot every single target, I was able to get enough points to still hold on to that match. Yeah, and I mean, dude, that was a, the biggest lesson five. I ever got in my life about shooting. Never yeah. quit. I don't, dude. I will take my gun apart <laughs> before I quit. I'm like trying to jam rocks in there for a firing pin, something, because I, I just I can't stand that quit. Because I can never take that back. Once you quit, dude, you will live with that the rest of your life. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Can never take it back. Yeah, so that was something like I don't know. I was taking for granted. Like I do it at a local, and then just be like, oh well, they weren't my match because like if you have one of those at a local, it, and it pretty much kills the whole match. But in this case, like there's 20 stages. Like you you actually can have a malfunction and clear it and keep moving and yeah. still have a good match, but you got to clear it fast. So there's no reason why I couldn't have just cleared it fast and kept moving and and still beat Paul on it. But I, know. <laughs> wow. I, that thing. <laughs> I was like my best see, we have fun dude <laughs> the best thing uh, is is they just keep beating up on the new guy but the new guy's probably already yeah better yeah than he's after all this time. Time. <laughs> and he's only been here a year <laughs> like number one on his list <laughs> yeah so dude just paul just get used to it they talk all this shit now and then when you start beating them they're like all right man we probably should have been a lot nicer to that dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the way they i look at really- it though is if they're shit talking oh, you they yeah. like you that's just yeah, the way this group right. is, right? If they're not if they're not trash talking you, they probably dislike you, and that's not a good that you. That's usually me, bro. If I'm not talking to you or we, I don't talk a lot of shit to you. I probably don't really <laughs> want to hang out with you too much. <laughs> so, so we're best friends. Yeah. All right, Ryan. Go yeah. Back. Well, I'll say the other big thing. The oh, other sorry, big Dan. thing for me, um, which you already hit on, it was just like mentality. Um, and uh, I know. I mean, I got frustrated during the match, which shouldn't happen, right? um after after that malfunction pretty much um 
I mean, I kept with it. I mean, I kept pushing, but like, you know, I just let it get to me too much. Um, so it's one of those things that like I knew about my shooting, honestly, going into it that I need to kind of have a better kind of even keel mindset, like stay aggressive, but like when something bad happens, just let it roll off. And, uh, I just kind of like hit my breaking point at that point. Like I had a couple of things and we still had like four or five stages left, but I still had continued to have like the worst day ever because I just kind of let those things compound, um, which, you know. I mean, honestly, it's probably the difference between like a hundred points. I mean, I, I didn't even look and go back and see like the what ifs, but like I was on pace after day two to be like in that hundred and, you know, maybe, maybe break the hundred, like would be like the top end of like what I could do. Um, and the, here I was like two fourteen or something by the end of it. So, I mean, it was just like a struggle at the, on the last day. And so like, that's kind of my big thing. Um, so you know, how do you work on that? But, um, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so I got, I got one for you to add to your list, bro. Um, and put it at the very top capital letters. Hell you have its own page. I don't care if it's the cover of the book. Nope. I don't care about your skills. It's about, mm -hmm. it's about finding that sense of calm before you walk up to the stage. I, I think I walked up to you at least five times and said, Hey, remember that wrist above? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I saw yes. That. Just, just relax. Boy, it right. It's not easy. It's not easy. Don't get me wrong, but I understand that the best, the reason why I have gotten very good, very fast is because I have been able to find a sense of calm that I probably don't have normally in my personality, right? Like I'm pretty mm. excited and I'm happy and I'm like super excited and jumping up and down and high fiving. But when I get to that line, I find that sense of calm and Another thing is, and, and most people don't know this, that don't take my class, and it's something I kind of added in recently, is I am using targets in the stage that set me up to calm down. Like, I literally run into a target and I'm like, calm down. That's the one. Even if it's a wide open five-yard target, that's the one. Because what will happen is that target, I'm coming in there like a bat out of hell, and I'm going to treat it like it's not there, and it's important. I, I mean, every target's worth the same amount, 10 points. So why treat an open target with less respect than the one that has a no shoot on it? it? It doesn't make much sense. I mean, I get it. I understand levels, but you start to find that sense of calm. And for you, that is the biggest breakthrough that you will have. If you can find that sense of calm and it's going to feel like you're just shooting so slow, it's going to feel like you're going backwards, but you have to find it because that sense of calm is where the separation between accuracy and speed, right? When you find that sense of calm and you see every target, and I know you felt stages like this before where you were like, oh my God, I saw every hit. It's because you looked at the target before you shot it. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> that simple, right? But the gap between a transition with the gun and your eyes, then the gun feels very slow because the gun isn't there yet. And it makes you feel slow. But at the end of the day, the reason it's faster is because you can pull the trigger immediately. When you whip the gun over there fast and the gun's just shaking all over the big brown thing, you're just going to shoot a bunch of shitty hits or you're going to go, whoa, 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 okay, there it is. Now pull the trigger. Yeah, and that's perfect. from finding that sense of calm. And it's not easy. Don't, dude, you're, you're talking to a guy who did not have a sense of calm on day one at all. So I, that's why I know how important it is because day two and three, I was like, Psh, dude, I'm seeing everything. Oh, that's right. Because I made that a focus after day one. I did not focus on it on day one at all. My breakdowns weren't focused on vision. Everything was just like, all right, shoot targets fast. Let's go. Well, that fucked me, right? I mean, it, yeah. it just completely screwed my match. But, you know, it is what it is. You learn. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously, believe it or not, I've been worse than where I am now. So it, it has been a yes. progression. And I know it's one of the things that I'm still working on. I don't think you on. did bad, dude. I don't think you did. Yeah, I know. I think you like, did great. Yeah. So, like, so. Um, one thing in, in practice that I think does kind of help me is, like, focusing smaller with my vision like actually gives me a sense of calm like because i'm not seeing like all the chaos with the you know the optics moving around the dots moving around i'm just looking at the spot and just like freaking waiting on that thing to show up and it just gives me that sense of like just you all you're doing is focusing really small so yeah. i know it's like a subtle little thing but try try black pasters so what I like to do is, yeah. and I don't put them on every target. What I like to do is, especially if I'm shooting a stage, I'll throw a black paster on those targets where I'm like, that's the calm down target. And the one I know I'm going to sweep, 
So I'll throw a black pacer. I don't put any black pacers on no shoots. It's pretty obvious. You better slow the hell down and get, you know, accurate there, but I'll throw a black pacer on there. And what I do with it is I try to run it about five, 10, 15 times with the black paster. And then you got to get rid of it because it becomes a crutch. So mm -hmm. with the black paster is you, it's not about hitting the black paster. It's about seeing the black paster, then the gun. What happens mm. is everybody uses the black pacer as an aiming thing. I don't give a shit if you hit it. I care that you see it, then mm. the gun comes. That's the key is to see the target first, have it in focus, and then pull the trigger, and then have the gun there and pull the trigger. Because if the tar target's really blurry, that means your eyes and gun were probably in front of each other, right? Mm. And that and that's going to be guaranteed bad hits because now you're like, oh wait, I got to make that up. Yeah. I don't know anything about that though. I've never done that before, so. <laughs> when you describe the five yard target and like rolling into position, like I see right. state, a certain yeah. states, yeah, state, yeah, maybe. dude, yeah, that's crazy how we can remember all that shit, but we can't remember, uh, you know, when, when to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ryan, how about you, bro? Uh, so, so for me, it's uh, the two big things that I have is being self diagnostic, knowing what your strong suits are and what your weak points are, and shooting to your abilities. Uh, at locals, you, I can kind of throw that to the wind because I know unless I go up the belt and I'm shooting with Tyler that I can I can step outside of my comfort zone and use it as practice. Hey, I'm going to try this. Even though I know that I shouldn't shoot this this fast, I'm going to try it and see what happens. I don't have this skill set yet, but I want to build it and I want to give it a shot. And just being able to go to nationals, like, hey, no, I don't have that skill set, so I'm going to take that extra two-tenths of a second and make sure I get the sight picture I need. Uh, so having that and then stage planning within that because all of us shot very similar stage plans across the day but we all kind of tweaked them and there was a couple that i disagreed with most of you guys on because hey this is a skill set this is where i'm strong this is what i'm going to do because it fits the skill set that i currently have not what i'm going after and i plan to develop over the next month two months three months uh and the second thing is being able to just kind of throw results to the wind at a local match i know i can shit the bed on a stage and 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 still finish pretty high near the top so i really don't care about the results too much but i put a lot of pressure on myself and got results focused instead of process focused at nats and just focusing on hey if i do bad on the stage it's going to drop me into standings and just having that in my mind instead of just having the laser focus on my process and execution uh that that ended up hurting me so as far as the difference between those two that those are two big things that i identified i think that's a good assessment like i think that's a great assessment to be honest with you, like understanding that you might not be at, well, I'll just use Tyler and I, since we're, we were on the squad, you're not at that level. And you looked at that stage, you're like, uh, you know, maybe that's not the target I want to enter on, or maybe that's not the way I want to enter that position. Or I don't want to move on that target. Um, especially at nationals, right? Like I know there's times that I would shoot. Uh, there were things that I saw that I was like, Tyler and I disagreed a lot <laughs> on stage plans. Right. And guess what? Both of us had very similar times, very similar everything. Why? Because it works for us, right? I mean, one of my favorite moments was when I was talking shit to Tyler about how aggressive he is on the walkthroughs. And then he tried to force himself not to do it. And I'm like, that's just a difference. It's not a good or a bad. It's just different, right? Like his way works for him. My way works for me. My way works for a lot of people. But Tyler's way works for a lot of people too. So it's like, it all depends on what, you really have to know that though. That's really difficult, Ryan. That's, that's great to hear, man. That's very difficult as a, especially a newer shooter, first nationals to go. Yeah. I, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> right. It's really easy to just go, hard. Oh, well the GMs are doing it. So I right. need to do right. it. But it's like, that doesn't right. always mean that's the answer. Don't <laughs> copy us every time. I think, I think our stage plans are way more efficient. Uh, in many ways than most people, like uh, just because the level that we've shot at and how long we've shot it, how many nationals we've shot. Um, I think you see a, you see a lot of inefficiency in some people's plans because of the strengths, right? Like, but the issue is in most of those stage planning issues is they look at it as in, I can't do that. The real answer is you just can't do it as fast as we can. Right. And that's where most people get screwed up. They think I can't do that. I'm like, you can absolutely shoot that you just can't go as fast as we can right and i'll shoot with tyler at, at belton regularly and i'll see him do something I'm like i can't do that but i'm gonna try it. yes and whether it hooked yes. up or not it really it really doesn't matter but that's, i'm definitely not gonna go behind you or tyler and be like i know i don't have that skill set but here at nationals i'm gonna give it a shot 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna write that down in my notebook and in my training, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that up and try it at the next local. But at NAS, that's not the place to do it. I think that's a great honestly, that's the great way to be because I don't see how any other way you can there's no other way. Right. There's there's absolutely no other way to go into nationals and be like, cool, man, I'm gonna go try a bunch of new shit. Mm, good luck with that. Right. Um I see it a lot too, actually, when you walk in stages like the day before and like people that I I'll see people and they'll go, oh man, well, I can like, I can, you know, run around this corner like this. And I'm just like, I've seen you shoot. You're not going to do that very well. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's, it sucks because you, you want to help. You want to make, you know, like, like Daniel's a good example, man. I was so many times I was like, uh, nope, sorry, bro. Like, this isn't the time for me to say that to you. Right. Like, cause at the end of the day, yeah. let's just say I told Daniel, like, dude, yeah. dude, move on that. On the, don't be a bitch. Shoot on the move on that. Um, yeah, probably not the best time to try yeah. that out, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's not, tough for me too. It's like day, Brian. It's not a good time right. to tell me because it's going to mess right. me up anyways. I'm going right. to do something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's why even like with Ryan, like I, I was seeing him do those things on like day one where he was like getting his gun up and then like walking into position. And I was like, I was like, fuck, do I say anything? Like, I was like, but I figured it was enough of like, I was like, he can move a little faster and it's not going to throw his whole fucking match. Like, I was like, let me tell you, bro, stop walking into positions. Like, get in there, you know? But I was worried for a minute before I said it, like, ah, oh, man, I hope this doesn't, like, get in his head, you know, because I don't want to mess with you guys. Yeah, what do you do there, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, um, at the end of the day, it's not, it, it, you go to Nationals as the shooter you already are. You're not going to change yourself at Nationals, boys. It, it didn't happen. And if you try, it's over. The only thing you can really do at Nationals is focus on, getting back to the fundamentals right like so like let's just say you have a mic well that mic came from somewhere it certainly didn't come from just magic right it, the, the target didn't move <laughs> it's what you did with the gun during that time so the best thing you could do is so you don't make that mistake is go to that safe table i cannot tell you how many people don't know what that safe table is other than mm -hmm. when they get their gun out of the box it is insane to me how many people don't use the safe table to get ready for their big the biggest stage of their life Right. They're getting in. I mean, the first stage of the match is the only time you ever see somebody ever practice dry fire because they were at the, the, to go get the gun out of the bag, out of the box. Dude, guys, I want you to understand something. I go to locals. I go to majors. I go to matches that don't matter. I go to my practices, my classes, everything. And I use a safe table. I warm up before I shoot. I never just shoot. You guys saw me, dude, you guys probably see me disappear a couple shooters before me. I unfortunately not every stage had a, a, a safe table. So I would disappear and run over there while, while the guy was shooting. I didn't even know who was up shooting and I'd run over and, and go do my stuff so I could get ready for the match, get, get mm -hmm. ready for my turn. So it's just one of those things where you have to understand that you, you are never going to change yourself in the middle of nationals ever. You can fix some things, like clean some stuff up, but you're never all of a sudden going to be this this massive. You're not going to be able to shoot forty yards on the run if you've never practiced shooting forty yards standing, right? It's just, I mean, you can try it. it sounds fun. I, I'd love to watch it, but uh, you can just count those two M's right there immediately on that scoreboard. So yeah, it's just not there. But got anything else? No, that, like that's that's my top two. I've got some small small nitpick stuff, but. Those are two biggest things that that, that I pulled away from it. Uh, like I said, it, it, it's mainly the pressure that I put on myself in the, in the mental part. The shooter I am at that match is that work's been put in weeks ago. Yeah. That nothing's going to change their shooting that ability. But the thing is, just the mindset is I've got to where even at like area matches, I can shoot upwards of 80, 85 percent of you know, some of the best in the country. But when I went to Nats, I allowed the pressure of Nats to get to me. And you try to say, hey, this is just the local. It's three days of the locals, but it's not. I put a lot of external force on my, or pressures on myself because I've got some things going on. I've got some contracts coming up, some, some sponsorship talks and, you know, where I want it to finish. And and having that mindset of, hey, I'm going to go here and force this finish, finish position instead of just focusing on, hey, just be the shooter you are. You've proven this at other matches. Just be the shooter you are, shoot your game, and you'll wind up where you, where you deserve to be. I tried to push past that in the first two days, and, and I got my ass kicked on it, and I, I dropped out of work you know, where I should have finished. And that's a great lesson. I've actually got that written down on my whiteboard over there is be the shooter you are. And that's one of my biggest things in my training and, and my matches moving forward is, is just the mental game, right? It's go there and be who you are. How driven are you now that you got your ass kicked? 
Oh, uh, dude, I'm, I'm pissed. I'd say sitting there at the banquet, <laughs> watching the guys up on stage, just sitting there seething. It's yeah. I'm uh. I thought I was training hard before this, but the, the, I'm hitting another gear. You were. Uh, I, I guarantee you yeah. that I will not. I, I will not go back to another nationals and and finish as low as I did at this one. I'm I bet you. I bet you dis- weren't practicing at all compared to what you are now. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a. It's amazing, dude. I'm telling you what, dude. I I placed in the top twenty. And I am practicing hard. I am more motivated than ever. I oh man, I can't, dude. I'm so jacked up about practice right now. It's insane. And I just keep learning, dude. Every time I learn something, though, it makes me want to go to practice more. Right? Mm-hmm. Like it was a hundred degrees out the other day. Yes, two days ago, a hundred oh, degrees my. and a hundred percent humidity. Like, bro, you couldn't, you could not stand under a tree without sweating. And I must, I ran eight hundred rounds in two hours. Like, dude, I am. I'm pissed. Like, I'm not mad at anybody else. I'm not even pissed. I just wish I would have known all the things that I learned <laughs> right at nationals. I'm not even mad that I didn't have those skills. I'm like, shit, how come I didn't catch on to those things earlier? Uh, it, it's just, you know, you, it's just, you find those breakthroughs, uh, through failure, right? You really do, man. You never, I've never learned as much by winning when I win. I'm like, Oh man, Okay, great. Well, uh, who had a who had a gun jam? <laughs> you know, yeah. like I don't look at it as in like fuck yeah, I'm the man. I'm like, all right, dude. I I, I that guy almost caught me. I, I only won by ten points or five points or man, I was three seconds slower. I was just a little more accurate. Or like, how can I pick up that three seconds? And like, it's always a learning lesson, right? It's never um and not in a negative way, but it's th- there's so many things that you can change after a match, whether you win or lose. But the losses, bro. Man, they're the best. They just, man, <laughs> best. I tell all my students, rush to failure. I'm rushing yeah. to failure because I learn 10 times as much when I fail as yeah. when I succeed. So I'm rushing to my next failure, and I look forward yeah. to my next failure because I know how much I'm going to grow afterwards. Yeah. So before, before I move on to Paul, I got a quick question about your list. Are you attacking the biggest things or the smallest things on your list first? Uh, so the bigger things. Uh, when it comes to like the smaller things, uh, I, I'll, I'll piece that. So I, one thing I've been talking about with Daniel, I'm big about a schedule. I sit down every Sunday night and I write out what every day, Monday, what are my two 15 minute dry fire session? What am I doing? What am I focusing on? And then the same for my live fire every week. I write down, I know on Sunday night, what drills and what I'm going to be running on Friday to verify the work I put in the week. And so Across the entire week, almost on a daily basis, I'm working on some of these bigger things. It's execution, shooting my skill level, and then kind of weed in some of those smaller things and work on them over time. I've got a little bit of an ADHD brain. I can't just stay on one thing for three hours at a time or either my brain just checks out. So I try to try to bounce around and just continuously come back to the larger things and just the smaller things push those in when I, whenever I, I find little gaps in the training. Give me a, give me a small thing that you are, um, or a big thing that you're working on and you're going to try to weave something small in. I'm interested. Uh, So my big thing is just like Tyler brought up is my entries, my entries that I train. I want to have the gun up before I get into position. And then he said that to me and I go back and I watch my video and I'm like, yes, I'm getting on the brakes way too early. So I'm working on finding that efficiency at the speed that I currently have when I'm moving aggressively, how to gear down to have the gun up just as I come to the target, not two steps before I get to the target. Uh, so working on that and then something else I noticed in those matches in, in the nationals in particular is when I'm doing that, that a lot of times I'm so worried about getting my gun up that whenever it crosses and comes on the target, that I'm not finding my small spot on the target. So right now I'm focusing on, hey, getting geared down. But before my gun comes up, as I'm gearing, turning my hips and blading to my target, that my eyes aren't going to the A zone. They're going to my small spot. And so that as soon as I break that barrier, the gun's up. My eyes are already on the small spot, not on the A zone. Because my eyes on the A zone, I'm taking Alpha Charlie on it every single time. So the reason that's going to work is because those two things work together. Yep. That makes sense? So the problem with where most people have issues is they'll, they, like, <clears throat> dude, you cannot get any better of a big goal to work on with ADHD. Let me tell you how I know (laughs) (laughs) movement will keep your brain extremely busy, which is good. So you can do that a million times and never get bored. So 
what you're trying to do is basically in the same goal, right? So you're, what I would recommend, and this is just a recommendation is separate the two things. So your entry point is your entry point. The gun is the gun. So once you get that breaking point, stop worrying about looking at the, the spot and try to find your dot. In other words, you should be aiming through the wall. So what happens is, is if you're looking at the target, and the gun is there, it'll put you in the spot you're supposed to be on, right? Because you'll already have your sight. So obviously don't stare at the dot, stare at the target and the dots in front of you, right? But the problem is, is you're kind of separating those two things. They're one thing now, right? So your entry, it gets to uh, what I call the crash is the part where you're gonna start to slow down. That's your crash. If your dot isn't up when you start to slow down, then that means eventually you're going to have the dot bouncing around. If you get it to bounce, but the dot's already there, dude, by the time you land, the gun will be calm. Make sense? So when you start to slow down, your gun needs to be up already pointed at the target. All right. Try that. You'll see a giant difference because right now you're separating them and they're not separate. Consider the stopping or the breaking point where you start to bleed that energy. The gun needs to be up. So the gun bounces. And then when you stop, it's bang, instant trigger pull. It's the, I call it the crash. So you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about when you, when you do it. Cause right now you have the right mindset for it. You're putting the two things that are necessities together, but just make it one, one thing to fix. Right. The reason I brought that up is because I see this a lot. Guys will go, all right, man, my draw sucked, but so do my transition. So I'm going to draw and transition. Um, nope. <laughs> because the, the draw is yeah, going to be good. Or the transitions are shitty or the transitions are good or the draw is shitty, right? Because your focus has to be on one thing to get better at it. You can't jam a bunch of stuff together. But right now what you're doing is perfect because it's, and dude, that is a massive, massive time thing. Like you will save a shit ton of time doing that drill. Like you are going to learn how much the shooting doesn't matter <laughs> in this sport. Be by by working on that entries and exits and movement. It's a massive thing because you're you're gonna learn how much the gun is affected by your body. Um, yeah, that's a, dude, that's a good list. That just that just that alone, man. Just work on that for a month. Don't worry about nothing else. I promise. If you just do that for a straight month, don't give a shit about your transitions. If you just focused on movement for a solid month, bro, I guarantee you two, three seconds gone instantly off your time. Right. And you can shoot some Charlies and Deltas. You know why? Because you're so much fucking faster than you were before. Right. Then you bring the accuracy back with it. But just focus on that movement, man. You'll see a giant difference. So, Paul. Um, so, I mean, man, I got a lot of stuff to work on. So, like, my list is almost the same list as it was before we shot nationals, as far as isolating fundamentals. Like, um, I do a lot of, I do a lot of things uh, at the at, at my level, you know, I mean, for only shooting a year, really like. But what what I learned was the gravity of those small fundamentals, like really being able to see on that scale, all the different shooters and having like really good shooters but a whole bunch of them. It's one thing to go to, uh, you know, an area match or something and you got, you know, six or seven you've got 50 you've got really good shooters out there and to see them and know like when i when you or tyler would do something on a stage and you're going fuck that's gonna cost me you know what i mean and i'm sitting here going damn that looked amazing mm -hmm. you know like just understanding that the gravity of those little bitty mistakes I didn't, I knew they were important, but I didn't realize at a national, like it's really what's separating the men from the boys. And, um, and then the, the thing that I learned, like to take my positive away from it is something that I kind of knew. Um, my mental game is really strong. Um, I, I don't, I don't allow nerves to really get to me. Um, and it, do, it doesn't really matter what the situation is. I mean, I'm just, I'm just fortunate like that. And, um, you know, I had an absolute dumpster fire on 20. I think we all saw it. We don't even talk about it. Um, <laughs> you know, it was bad. And I, and I tried to game up from 19 because 19, we sat there like for like 30 minutes and I ingrained that stage plan in there. And it was like target two, I'm off. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, and like, and then so 
stage 20, I'm like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do something fantastic, right? Like everybody's shooting this target from over here. And I think the dumbasses, because I didn't really, me and Carl walked the stage. Uh, that's my alter ego who has really bad ideas. And um, we, I didn't really put a lot of emphasis on that stage. And I saw, I, I'm actually, and Tyler, I don't know if you remember this. I'm walking that stage while you're walking it. Right. I'm like going to pace the target. You look back at me and you're like, look, I don't care. But just so you know, at a national, don't walk the stage while somebody else is on deck, you know, and they're walking the stage. And I'm like totally blacked out. I'm like, what? You know, like you talking to me, you know, and then like <laughs> I'm looking at it because I'm seeing I'm like, why does everybody keep crashing into this port to shoot this target? So like, you know, beep. And I go to shoot. and I'm like, hell, yeah, I'm shooting it from back here and like everything. And then, you know, a couple 40 yard targets. I'm walking down to them. They're like. FTSA and I'm like no way and I'm like I shot every target like you're you're out of your mind and then sure enough I got four bullet holes on one target and that one behind the barrel that everybody was crashing into the port it was a big deal I don't get mad man I really don't get upset anymore anymore it was a big but deal it, it was a huge deal right and like so I I walked off you know I walked off I regrouped um, I'm like ch trying to, trying to group and I look at Tyler and he's all like, gee golly. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a mother, you know, like, actually, you know, he do that like, because that sounds like something that he natural. would do, you know? And so <laughs> I like left y'all to pace the rest of those targets and I just went and set on it. And then my next stage was my best stage of the match. Right. Like I actually, like I, I placed under a hundred on that. And it was like, that was when. You know, so the state, the aftermath, I was like, this is one of your strengths right here is like baseball. You know, we play, you're the guy on the line, you're at the plate, everybody's watching big stadium and I don't really crack under pressure. And I've just kind of, I was able to really utilize that skill that I have because some of the other skills I really don't have. I don't possess good exits, good entries, transitions. Like I'm still really working on a lot of that stuff. So um, that's my, that's my takeaway. Like my notebook is, man, these things are really important and you're really good at this. And it's like a list of one on each, <laughs> you know? So like, oh, dude, uh, I think it's just as important to have a list of positives than it is to have a, a, a list of things to work on. And I think the problem is, is, and, and, you know, I, it's just kind of the way I talk, but you know, when you write down a list, I look at that list and I go, those are a thing of negatives, but they're not, they're a list of improvements. Those are actually, so I look at a mistake as a positive thing now. Um, I, I use, I always have, and that's why I was able to get good at the sport is I've never looked at a mistake, um, as a negative because I'm like, Ooh, that just gives me something else to motivate me to get, to get to work when I get out of here. Um, and a lot of people don't look at it that way. So, right. Like, dude, I, I watched you shoot and, um, man, you suck. And you did a really good job holding it together. No, I'm just kidding about the yeah. no, but <laughs> seriously, dude, that's like, my list. <laughs> I think that most people don't understand that that skill that you have is very hard. Like people What'd you just say, Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Dude, is I'm a, like, can I buy that from you? Yeah, that is a <laughs> that is a serious town. So no, I don't give a crap. <laughs> ask ask Tyler. Ask Tyler. Tyler. So Tyler had a stage where he had two mics on the stage and but he absolutely went for it. So it was a hero zero in many ways, even though he was pretty under control. It was just like the mics that he got, I was like, wow, that's a little out of character for you at this kind of a match. But he had those two mics and he walked over and he kind of just talked it out, like just said out loud what he wanted to say. And he felt yeah. this and he's this and this and that. And, and I was just like, all right, let's get back to work. And he shot a flawless third day after that. It was just that one yeah. stage that, that cost him. Right. So, and, and you know, even after I had my mistakes, I had a mic on a stage that uh, just absolutely inexcusable. And I was just like, all right, let's go. Like, there is nothing you can do to take that bullet back. If that bullet mattered so much, why didn't you pay attention before you shot it? Or the two lack thereof. Right, right, exactly. So, I mean, that should be a very valuable lesson for you. Um, if you see every dumbass on your stage going to that port, you should probably go, maybe I'm the dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> and go check hey, out I'm that like, board. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was just trying to really pull out one of those 25 hit factors that I'm like really famous for. And I thought that was <laughs> going to be the way that I did it, <laughs> you know, like totally uh, redeeming myself from stage 19. I'm like, here you go, guys. Here it is. So, so here's and I mean, I still got some of those little issues of like, um, like, you know, and Tyler, Tyler called it just the, the one year issues or, you know, maybe not 
so so poorly. Inexperienced. But, um, yeah, it's just in like some things, like as soon as the the buzzer, hit, I mean, the, you beep, and I'm like, I to, fucking some stages, I just black out. Like I know I'm executing my stage plan, but like fundamentals <laughs> just go to shit. I mean, grip, like uh, just feet. You saw one of my videos the other day, and you were like, "Hey, try to move your feet faster, and that'll force you to, you know, do other things faster." And like, <laughs> I'm pretty, quick. I'm pretty fast. I, like, I get in there, and I'm like, "Shoot, stage here." Duh, duh. And I mean, I just we get all robotic. It's like really weird. So, um, I still got a lot of these newbie issues, and I mean, um, I think when a lot of people shoot with me. They, they get a mixed vibe because they're like, I don't know, you know, like he's pretty good and like all the real good shooters know him and they allow him to be like in the group. So, um, but when he shoots, like sometimes it's not good, you know, and I'm like, yeah. So you mean you're thing. like all the rest of everybody else that shoots USB? Yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah. It's like, so, but, but, but like, honestly, that's like, what's cool. And that, I think that's, what's so really good about a nationals is like, you're, you're shooting three days. Cause so like, you know, I mean, everybody shoots locals one Saturday, like you just can't do anything right. And like, who's going to have the best three days in a row is who's fundamentally the most sound. Like really, that's what it, that's what it boils down to. Cause we're all going to have mistakes. And that's why, like Daniel was saying, I know at a, at a level like that, I can have a mistake. I just got to get over it. Cause we're all going to have mistakes. It's too many stages to be perfect, but you know, who is the most fundamentally sound? You know, and that's why y'all, that's what I saw. Like the guys that are fundamentally good, like you can put any pistol in their hand and they're probably still going to outshoot you with the one you shoot every day of your life (laughs) because they're just fundamentally strong. Those, that's what I'm aspiring to be. And not just shooting, right? Because like you said, it's like the smallest thing that we do, but like I've really learned how important exits are. Like, I mean, I can't believe how long I've been taking on exits. Exits, I think, are like, right now, for me, they're like the most important. Like, I'm willing at a local to leave on a target and and Mm -hmm. alpha mic it because I'm exiting so fast right now. Because I'll stand there and look. Like, it's just, you know, so that's what I took away, man. I mean, it's so, it was so cool to see, like, these these high-level shooters really battle it out. And then what little bitty mistake made or break the the guys up top that's what i learned so i know not to do those mistakes <laughs> it was a really good assessment bro especially for first time nationals very good that's right Thank very you. good so attack, he's all dead that's right attack this <laughs> well, he shoots with you obviously so he's got your swagger already bro i'll tell you what uh, I, I would I, I would highly recommend uh that you isolate the things that you think you're the worst at so the problem with exits and things like that are people struggle isolating things, right? So you have to isolate that skill. So what I would recommend is put up one piece of steel. It's all you need, right? Because what is your focus? It's an exit. So why put up a bunch of paper and shooting doubles and, and all this? You shoot two pieces at a steel, two, two shots at a steel too. But the goal should be to exit on the trigger pull. So when the gun goes bang, run. Don't look at the steel. Don't look for a hit. The hit was already decided by your sights and trigger. So once the sights are on there, you have permission to pull the trigger. Once you pull the trigger, run, because the bullet's already gone. You can't take it back. Make sense? So literally set up on the piece of steel, and as soon as you feel the trigger start to squeeze and that gun lift, turn your head and run. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, in less than a month, you will be leaving targets and paper and everything with good hits, and you will have no idea what you had on the paper until other than what the dot told you to pull the trigger on. Yep. But you've got to isolate it, bro. The biggest problem is, is guys come in and they throw four targets out there and they go, whack, 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 and then they turn around and run when they, all they did was just shoot really fast. They didn't exit any faster. They just shot faster, right? Because the gun is dictating what they consider speed. The speed is, is how fast can I leave the position? So if you put, let's just say you put the steel out there at 12 yards. If you pull the trigger and you can see the steel and hear it at the same time, you're staring at the damn target. You can't do that with paper. That's the problem. Most people practice paper and you can't do that with paper because you don't get the audible, right? You don't get the confidence of hell. Yeah, I hit it and I was already gone because what happens with the paper is you look at it, you go boom and it goes, okay, I hit it. I move. 
you need to not know that. Like you should not know where the hit was other than what your dot told you to. Dude, I do it yeah. in pri- I do it in class continuously. I people ask me all the time, do you shoot a 25 yard target and leave on the 25? Absolutely. There is nothing better than leaving on a 25 yard target when everybody else is still waiting for that thing to go ding. <laughs> hmm. I'm already on to the next two targets. So, and if you watch most guys like JJ and all these guys that really focus on the exits that are really focused on movements, Eric, holy shit, they don't wait for anything. They call it off the dot and leave. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, and as, as embarrassing as it is, like I just, me and Daniel actually talked about calling shots and, uh, you know, my, like this is just, just maybe three, two, three months ago. Like I really actually understood what calling a shot was. Like I thought it meant look at yeah. your holes on paper and yeah. not, I'm like, he's like, well, well you, you call, call it off. Of your, he was like, you call it off of your sight picture. And I'm like, what? So oh, just so you, like, I know the you're not a man in the, in the, So I know you're like, not a computer guy, but I just want you to know uh, if you stare at the paper and you see the two holes, that's called confirmation. Not mm-hmm. shot calling. <laughs> yeah, so Confirmed. Two South hits, Carolina shot. Got him. I, uh, I shot South Carolina, and when Tyler was uh, like CRO on one of the stages, I like, I'm like, hey man, how was that? And he was like, you look like you're over confirming like hell. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, like I'm just going. Home. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, I'm, just I'm going home. Uh, DJ, go ahead, bro. I was kind of hard to follow kill shot up there. You know, he he takes a lot yeah. of shine. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, um, it's me, baby. Yeah, I know it is. But I'll tell, I'll, he knows it. We do it all the time. I'm very in the same mindset of uh, fire and forget. I never dwell on stages. I don't, uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but even the misses and the bad stages I may have had, I don't think, I've never once there was a negative word out of my mouth, negative uh, emotion exuded or anything because I forget quick. It's like, ah, I had a bad stage. And then as soon as I'm done, they say a low show clear. I'll pause for a quick second and you'll probably see the in a lot of videos. I'll stand there for literally one or two seconds and then I'm done. It's over. I'm on to the next one. So that's one thing that I know I'm, I've always done very well is stay positive the whole time, no matter what is going on. But one thing I did notice this nationals uh, because I had time to actually focus on certain things was in the middle of stages, I lose focus. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> in the middle of stages, a lot, I'll lose focus. And then next thing I know, I can see it in my videos and I actually feel it happen. My aggression just disappears. And like, I'll start off really good, really aggressively. And then I'll shoot a stage, I'll shoot a target, then wherever, whatever may happen or occur, then all of a sudden I'm dragging ass. And I don't know what happens in the middle of stages, but that happens to me a lot. And I've seen it and I felt it. And I'm trying to figure out a way to work on that, but I really don't know how to practice something like that. Cause it happens in matches. It doesn't happen at practice because it's regimented. It's 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 you know everything is uh under is controlled. You know what you're doing, and it's like I, I, I something that just really bothers me that I lose focus a lot. Cause like I was saying, I, I'll stay on pace with you guys in the beginning and stay with you and do certain things time wise, and then you pull away towards the end of each stage. When I look at them next, back to back, and I'm like, what happened? Because I just slow down every time and it's not intentional, obviously, but I don't know why I do that. Cause then that obviously leads into me having consistency issues on stages as well. Uh, I can shoot a stage really good, then really bad, then really good, then really bad. Because I saw that happen a lot. I'll do top 30 on a stage and the next one is 80. Then I'll do top 40 on a stage. The next one is 115. And it just, it would just, it would fluctuate up and down. And I don't know how to fix something like that. So that is something that I've, mentally I'm working on because I I feel like I have the physical ability to do a lot of the things that I want to do but it's like I don't know how to apply them you know on a consistent basis that was my biggest problem do you have to force yourself to be aggressive yes and I'll tell you why um I'm a former fighter I'm a former football player and I was a running back what I'm used to is full gas no stop right So in the beginning of shooting, 
I would go as hard as I could on every single thing, entering positions and everything, but then I would literally crash. Like I'm trying to stop out the absolute last second. So I'm falling out of the box. I'm, 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 I'm off balance. I, I don't have my footing. And then I'm, I'm literally waving all over the place, trying to get myself back together. So then I started working on like dialing back and then entries and exits where the footwork works really well coming from the previous sports where I can enter a position very well with no problem and stay balanced. But then after certain things, what happens is mentally the aggression just disappears. So it's like, I do literally have to tell myself be aggressive the whole time. I have to feel. Does this sound familiar where you're constantly, you know, overly aggressive? Sound familiar? Did, did mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that earpiece <laughs> broke real quick. Right, so, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I told down. Daniel. <laughs> and this is where Daniel made the biggest change in his shooting. And he still struggles with it because it's a learning process. It just it takes time to find and that. I might sense be of able to help him a little bit. So say what you're gonna say. Bro. All right. Um it's it's real simple. Shooting is shooting and running is running. So the issue right now is you're jamming your running and your shooting together. So what happens is when you, this is kind of what I was talking to Ryan about earlier with the entries at some point, the movement stops and then your brain literally has to switch and go, we're shooting because what controls my shooting? It certainly isn't my feet. It certainly isn't my trigger finger, my eyes. It's the vision of the dot. If the dots there, I have permission to pull the trigger. If I don't have my dot, I shouldn't pull the trigger. So if you focus on getting the gun up sooner, It'll allow you to calm down, but you still have to, dude, I have to, in the middle of the stage, I have to go calm down, relax, chill, whatever the word is you use, you have to find that sense of calm when it's time to shoot. And that's the biggest switch that has to happen, especially when you start shooting, right? Like right now you're super aggressive on your entries and your exits. Daniel, dude, that guy was so aggressive. I was like, listen, guess what you're about to do right here? Well, you certainly ain't running. Stop running. It's time to shoot. And he was just like, all right, okay, maybe I'll think about shooting now. Right? Like you need you a safe to, word. You gotta change. Yes. <laughs> like, like legitimately a safe word, bro. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I will literally yell out chill to myself if that's what it takes, because I, my brain is like a hamster running around in a wheel in there. So it's like go, 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 go. No one's ever had to tell me to go faster. Everybody's told me the opposite. Like, dude, I'm standing behind Nils at the award ceremony. And, and we're at the prize at the prize table. And he looks at me, he's like, bro, you're probably the only guy I've ever met that I've that at this level that I've like, hey, do less. <laughs> like, do less. I mean, if that doesn't tell you what they see <laughs> as I'm shooting, I, I mean, that's what I tell myself. The problem is, is and he's looking at me like, yeah, this is going to be hard, like for you to understand, but do less. You're just like, a high energy guy though, man. Well, it's not, it's not just that. Yeah, it's that it's but... the, during the stage, how do I corral that high energy, right? It's gotten me where I'm at right now because I have high energy. The ADD is super focused where it needs to be, but it's like, I, and it's gotten way better. Obviously look at where I placed at nationals. It's way better than it's ever been, but it's like when it creeps back in because I didn't use my safe word. I like that. Actually, I'm going to yeah. start using that boys. Uh, uh -huh. You know, I didn't use the targets to set me up for what I was supposed to do. And and I paid dearly for it at the time. You know, it's just, it's how it works. So, uh, but yeah, dude, I, I think, you know, and everyone's going to go, Oh, slow down. No, dude, don't slow down. You need to learn where to control the slowdown, right? It's where to control it. And, and you have to take your brain from aggressive, hard movement to, Oh, oh, oh uh, I better get the gun up. I got to start aiming before I get there. Okay. Well, I better slow down. Cause this damn thing's flying all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the, that gun for me is what yeah. activates the slow down and calm down part. Right. DJ, so. I got a question. I got a question for you on that. You're saying like in the middle of your stage that you're, you're losing concentration. And mm -hmm. so when you, when you find yourself doing that, does do you find it affecting your aggression to the point where it's, you, you're kind of pausing to, to try to refocus yourself yes. to push to the next target. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing some of that same stuff. <laughs> I'll Literally, tell you, for me, boys, it takes two bullets. It's two misses before I calm down. Like, I'm not joking. Like, if I come in on a piece of steel and I send two rounds, round number three is the greatest shot I've ever taken in my life. Because I go, hey, asshole, squeeze. Oh, yeah, you got to aim. <laughs> <laughs> but that's half a second later. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's the problem.
I mean, you hit on it, Tom. I mean, Tyler mentioned it like during the match for me. Um, he was like, I, what I do is I get into position and I literally tell myself, breathe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. Okay, yeah. This it's coming good. from Tyler who holds his breath through the whole effing stage. <laughs> <laughs> I do get, 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 he's red when he's done. <laughs> no, <laughs> but like. Out. <laughs> that's why I have to shoot so fast because yeah, I run out right. of air if I don't. <laughs> I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. <laughs> cool. So um, the, the only thing you can afford to be aggressive on during your shooting is your vision like that's the only thing that you can be aggressive on so like for me like the getting distracted thing is as long as i tell myself like what a run in position is like vision vision like because that's the one thing that because i mean our brains do this right and i i have the adhd thing i'm pretty sure undiagnosed all that crap but um like you've got to give your brain something to do and that's the one thing i think you can consciously do um you know, to kind of keep it occupied at all times during the match, like just focus intently on the vision. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, I get the. I definitely do that because I, I it, excuse me, I'm trying to like dial in that actual dry fire and like training program because uh, I actually had Caleb Patterson a couple of weeks ago at a local match come up to me and like, he was asking me questions about what I've done to make it to GM or what I've done to get to the skill level I'm at. And like, uh, what's your training schedule like? And like, are all these things. And I'm like, I don't have any of that. And like, he, he got mad at me. So what the fuck? So you're telling me you made it to GM with nothing. I was like, it just like happened. <laughs> so it was like, I, I, I'm there, but it's like, I, I'm not consistent enough to to stay at the GM percentages and level of every, every match I go to. Like locally, I win I win locals a lot, but you know our locals do have a lot of decent shooters when it comes to GMs in general. Like um, Brantley shoots our locals a lot. Tyler shoots our locals a lot. We got Jason Clark. We got Mike Wayne, David Lyell, Caleb Patterson. Like we have good people at locals, and a lot of times I'm second or third overall with those guys and. But that's six stages, right? I can I can hold it together for six stages, um, <laughs> <laughs> like we just Let's said. Go. You know, six it. stages. I can I can yeah. hold it together for six. And but it, and my thing is, I wanted to come in with a good mental state and you know all of that internationals, but everything that led up to it had me everywhere else focused on all these other things and worrying about uh, inspections and grading and all this stuff and what I need to do to move and the money coming in. I was just all over the place. So I think that attributed Everybody to Todd's like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, think I literally was like trying to find the, the focus. But it just wasn't there. And I was probably why I lost concentration majority of the time. So is it safe to say that you're... your focus is going to be on mental? Yeah, absolutely. Because so where, okay, uh, not, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are you going to find that? Uh, you dry obviously fire aren't practice. finding it in practice right now. Well, I'm not practicing exactly, so I'm going to practice. I'm actually going to practice. Like, no, I, no, I but I'm it. saying, like, the only place to find that type of of thing is at matches because it's a mental yeah. thing at matches. And if you do practice and you actually have a practice. You need to start. Do, do you just run drills when you do practice, or do you run stages, or what do you do there? Mostly drills. So you need to get rid of drills. Like, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the biggest mistake that most people make once they get their fundamentals down and they understand their fundamentals is they only do drills, right? Because that's what got them to the game. That's what everybody, it brings them to the game. They, they locked in those fundamentals. But now it's time to play the game. Right now it's time to play the game and you've got to learn how to win stages and win matches. So what happens is, is the reason you're losing your mental in the middle is because all you've done is practice drills. So let's just say you're doing doubles for 50 rounds. Well, it's pretty damn simple. Bum, 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 bum for 50 rounds, a couple of reloads here and there, whatever. Well, why do you mess that up in a match? Because it's more complex. There's more things to have to remember throughout that entire stage. So running practice stages and you don't need to be extravagant. You hell, you don't even need walls. You just need to focus going from position to position to position to position to position to position and executing the entries and the mental execution of that stage. The second thing is, is never, and I repeat this, never run the same stage twice. I don't give a shit if it's four pieces of paper. I never run the same drill twice. 
I don't do drills anymore. My focus is on the mental game. I already know how to shoot. Dude, I have never shot more accurate in my life right now. And guess how many drills I do? This, none. I don't do any drills anymore because I've got my fundamentals locked in. The only thing I focus on now is execution of stages. And I don't run giant stages. This weekend uh, or two, three days ago, I had four barrels up. That's it. And I put up, I don't know, eight paper, five steel. And I ran multiple positions, multiple locations, multiple arrays. Pretty simple. I was going to say, too, you can do a lot of shit with barrels. Yep. Barrels are a mm -hmm. Dude, one set of barrels. Shit, a cone. You don't need just a start stick, a stick where you could run to that stick and use it as a fault line. You don't need a lot of equipment. Running stages is amazing. Don't get me wrong. If you got an opportunity to be able to set up a stage and run it a, yeah, a million times, I have a full, yeah. I have access to full match uh, props. I have full match. Uh, props. I would say the well, only problem with that is how much time do you have to practice mm -hmm. getting after you set all that shit up? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why it's like, so I just think it's like you don't need. You don't need fault lines. You don't need this because you're setting the parameters. Mm -hmm. You're just running at once. So, like, don't waste time on a lot of that Ryan, stuff. Ryan, like, you need If a barrel lines. does the job, don't waste time putting a wall. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, you need fault lines. Don't listen to Daniel. He don't know what the fuck he's talking about. When you're working on entries, you need legitimate fault lines. Yeah, now, yeah, I'm not yeah, joking. No, but yeah, I, so don't listen to Daniel. Daniel just told everybody. Stage, in the, right? yeah, he yeah. told all my millions and millions of fans <laughs> to not use Shut fault lines. So. <laughs> so. But, yeah, yeah. I That's get awesome. that. I'm going to start working on that as well because I normally do just drills because a lot of time I don't have enough time to set up a stage or whatever the case may be. I'll get there for an hour, hour and a half, and then I'm right back out. So it's like uh, I got to work on the actual um, stages and smaller ones. That way I can, um, like you said, increase the complexity of it. Because if I'm going to just do all open paper, that doesn't help me at all. Um, uh, dude, I don't, I don't think open papers your issue. I don't think making the targets harder is the issue. Like if you're losing your effort, making the target harder isn't going to make your effort better. Does that make sense? It's yeah. a memory game. So, so when I learn something new, when I teach somebody, like Tyler's been to my class, Daniel, Daniel, how many no shoots do I put up in my class? Uh, you there's the zero. One, there's there's the one drill where you had. No, nope, got rid of it. No shoot in the middle. You got rid of it. Well, the reason why is because I got I was able to use steel in it, it now. New okay. classes. I get rid. New I classes. do not put up any hard <laughs> targets other than uh, uh, whatever the distance is or behind yeah. a barrel or whatever. But I put up zero no shoots. Why? I don't need to teach you to aim. I need to teach you how to understand what your entries, what your exits, how to enter, how to move faster, how to get out of that position. I'm not teaching you how to aim at my class. You probably know how to aim by the time you get to my class. <laughs> right so if you're learning something new don't put up a bunch of damn no shoots because all that does is make you go slower dude the la what you literally just said is i shoot slow i go slower okay let's put up a headshot or a no shoot that sounds good a tuxedo that ought to make you faster does that make uh -huh. sense like yeah. fight the urge to make the shooting harder if the aggression is the problem the problem isn't the targets that are out there if you start shooting a bunch of no shoots yeah that fine practice that shit but at this point, it's about aggression. It's a mental thing. So you need to put it up there to where you'll get on it and start going. Does that make sense? Yep. So, All right. Even with the fault lines, though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't waste time screwing them down was my point. You just throw no. them out there. Yeah, I just throw them out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I use them. I'm just yeah. saying, like, don't waste yeah. time screwing stuff down. I will, I will hammer, there, hammer, I will hammer it, it down if I'm going <laughs> to yeah. have somebody push. Like, because I use the fault line it as a breaking. In, yeah, yeah I'll use the one yeah. fault line. But if it's like a start stick, I don't I don't care about any yeah, of that yeah. stuff. So yeah, for sure. So DJ, yeah, I think I know make sure that is in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyler, how about uh, you, bro? Now Parker Paul is gonna say something to DJ. Oh, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Um, I think I know what, what DJ was saying. And and I I learned that just actually here recently doing some practice. And you know, you wanna you're like, okay, I need to go in here, but in, in stages we run across like a hard target, and that's where I thought I was eating up time. It's like everybody else is in and out of it, and I'm I'm not. And then I actually started looking at some things and I realized if I do everything good before there, then I have just as much time as everybody else to do what we need to do while we're there and then get the hell out of there. So it was like not what I'm doing while I'm shooting. It was everything I was doing that led me into that position where I tried to make up the time. So I think that's what Tom's saying by getting rid of that in practice because it ain't got nothing to do with that. 
Yeah, it all adds all this shit adds up. There's, there's never a single position that costs you a lot of time. It's a bunch of positions, right? Like I just went through my last post. I just looked at my stage versus um, Christian Seiler stage. And he didn't beat me on one single position at all. Like I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh, he beat me there. But then I beat him here. Oh, I beat him there. Oh man. Then he beat me there. Oh man. I had a trigger freeze there. Oh man. That's, that cost me a lot of extra time compared to him. And then I'm like, all right, well, let's see how, how did I do? I'm like, oh, I'm close. I'm close. Oh, he smoked me in that position. Right. And I'm like, all right. So it wasn't the whole stage. It wasn't all shit. It's mm -hmm. just a specific section. And, and it could be just because he's better at that than I am. Right. That's something he's already fixed that I haven't fixed. It's, it's never one thing. It's never one thing in a stage, right? Like, obviously it's the, like everybody can go back and go, oh man, I lost that stage because I had a mic. Well, no shit, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like that's the easy thing. But what got the mic, the entry, the exit, the this, the that, that, that it's always something that leads up to that mic. It's very rarely just your shooting, your body position. Did you come in? Were you still? Nope. You were moving around and you decided to shoot a 40 yard target on one foot. Sounds smart, mm -hmm. right? But well, most people don't analyze our shooting like that. Now, well, I, I can't remember that about saying one position cost Daniel six seconds on stage 14. No, oh, one position nine. didn't cost Daniel six seconds. His lazy ass created <laughs> and his give up attitude created a six second loss. Because guess what? He could have he could have spent all day long running from one spot to the other trying to clear that gun. Makes sense. Yeah. I will say this. So what was it, Cherokee that we just shot, Tyler and Paul? Was that the match we just shot? Yep, and I think uh, was it stage four or five that I won by over six percent overall, right? And that was one thing. That was the last. I think that was either the last or the second before last stage of the entire match. Because the first two stage stages, I was terrible, misses, no shoots, everything. And then mentally, I was like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Because this is where I figured out, and it was confirmed from nationals. And this right here was like, okay, so this really is your problem. During a stage, you're just losing aggression. You're not focused. You're you're not you know remembering your spots or whatever. So that stage, I won time wise by over two, two seconds overall, and points wise, I think I had some of the most points on that stage. And that everything just worked well. I wasted no time in any positions. I trusted the dot. I trusted the gun. Maintained my aggression on reloads. I took uh, shots of falling out of a position on a no shoot double stack target. Came in, entered on a twenty yard popper and on a move, and then just kept going through. Like everything just flowed because mentally I stayed locked in the whole time. And I was like, okay, this is what I need to continue with. And that's why it made me realize that's what I was doing wrong when I look back at everything else previously because then that next stage i won again or i was like second or third on some small little things it was like the small shit that cost it but i was like okay i can do it it's just the consistency part and i gotta work on that um the way y'all are talking about i gotta just work on that specific never, never ending battle bro That's, welcome welcome yeah. to the sport <laughs> I, I just had that conversation yesterday with somebody that it's crazy that those stages where you can lock in and keep that aggression and keep that focus, like I've shown that I can do that and I can beat Tom on some stages and beat Hetherington on some stages and hang with Tyler. There's a few stages where you can do that, but it's just like, how do you find that consistency to, yeah. to maintain that locked in 100% aggression the entire time? And it's fun how to do that stage after stage. And once you do, you know, you end up finishing in the top 20 at Nationals. Yeah. It's yeah, an isolated skill. Tyler, go ahead, bro. Well, I uh, I want to start this with saying that I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything. Okay, no, <laughs> we don't look at you like that. Go. But I got a little guys. What a preface. <laughs> See y'all later. <laughs> no, I, dude, I left nationals and I was really proud of myself. I felt like I shot about as good as I possibly could, and you know, I made such minor mistakes in my mind. I just, I was really happy with myself and my shooting mm -hmm. and uh you know so and honestly most of my my list is where normally and it's, it's just mental it's all mental everything i always feel like i need to work on now is mental i could shoot good i could run pretty good i just need it's mental once me and tom figured out how to run on that crazy gravel it was pretty much good to go after that it was just the little minor things but the um where a lot of people will like mess up a stage and then 
think too hard about that stage going into the next one. I found myself doing that like once or twice where I had a really good stage this year at Nats. And I was like really amped up from like, dude, I'm fucking killed that stage. And then I go to the next stage and I was still thinking, man, I fucking wrecked that stage. And I wasn't paying attention to the stage at hand. So it's like, it's the same thing. It was weird. Like you can be mad at how you shot a couple mics or you can also be like too elevated and you lose your focus because you're still like, man, that was fucking tight. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, I need to focus. So like some of my mics were me actually being too like excited from a stage prior. And I'm like, I've never like had that happen before. Normally it's, man, I fucked that stage up and I'm depressed for the next stage, but it goes both ways. You could be too excited going into the next stage and then muck it up really bad too. It's like shit. So it just be, uh, I don't remember who said it. I think it was Paul or whatever, but it's like, even if it's a good stage, being able to just brush it off, we're here now. Focus on this. Like, it doesn't matter. Damn, that, that's done. Yeah. So Damn, good or bad, bro. focus on the task at hand is uh, so, my big takeaway. Hold on, I'm DJ. Hold of... on, DJ. DJ, hold okay. on. So since you shot so amazing, um, <laughs> not to say that, you, you know, that you're cocky or anything. No, I'm just kidding, dude. I think that's a great, <laughs> to be honest with you, because we are great friends. It is very, very difficult for you to say that to yourself, and I know it is, and I'm glad you did because I feel the same way about myself. I feel like it's very, very difficult for me to go 18th, yeah. But you know, I'm very happy with how I'm shot. I shot. I'm very happy with how you shot. I I shot with you the entire weekend. Uh, you handled your mistakes amazing. You handled your successes amazing, right? I think you shot one of the best matches I've ever seen you shoot. Um, you made some, some, some blunders just like everybody else. Right. And it was just, you managed it great. It was awesome to watch this year versus last year, right? Last year you lost, dude, you're easily top 20 last year. Hell you're top 10 level probably last year if you don't run by targets, but you mentally <laughs> locked in better this year. It was great to watch. Um, so what are you specifically working on after this, since you did so well, like obviously mentally what is it that you're working on like i'm super interested in yours because you've gone to quite a few nationals we shot together you shot in the top 15 uh you know where you at so i mean it's just focusing on mental i mean i feel like so even what i tried to do so sean collision came up with a random challenge for me a week ago and i tried it at this last match but just trying to like he said, I bet you can't shoot a whole match with all outs. I was like, fuck. I was like, that's going to be really hard because we try to always push our speed and stuff. I'm going to try it again tomorrow at Spartanburg as well. Um, it feels like I'm shooting IDPA, which sucks. But yeah, You the, shot slow uh, as shit in your video, by the way. That shit was terrible. Dude, it was so slow. I almost didn't post it. <laughs> so go but fast the, uh, and get off us. Don't go slow and get off us. Well, I didn't feel like I was trying to slow down. It's just like, like not accepting a Charlie is like, it's a weird thing to think about. But um, because it, I don't know, it's tough. But the, I don't know, just but, yeah, isn't that what most people do when they go to the nationals? Though, a hundred percent, and that's the they problem. Try not to have a mistake. They just, so let, dude, I'm glad you brought that up because that I was didn't mean to segue, but it's just like, yeah, but that was, was on my list, heavy, dude. That was on my list. I wanted to talk about that because this is perfect time for Tyler, right? Because Tyler, do you never shoot to mess up, right? Like you never think, like, what if I mess up? You just shoot, right? Yeah, I just shoot right, my so game. So when you come right up to a no yeah. shoot, when you came up to the 35 yard no shoots, the 40 yard shots, you never once said, uh, man, I better aim really high just in case I get a no shoot. Or you just go, all right, center of the brown, center of the brown, shoot, shoot, go. Right? Mostly what I'm thinking about in those is just dots there, trigger prep, and then, you know, that's Dang. it. Like I'm not, I'm not thinking about the white. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going, oh, what if I mess up? I just go, I've done this before. I just do what you know what to do. I have seen people um, on our stage, on our squad, go, what about this? Uh, really? You're going to stage plan a screw up? <laughs> You're going to stage yeah. plan a makeup shot just in case? You're going to stage plan to come in on that no shoot and go boom, 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 three shots just because it's a long distance target? Now you're giving yourself a much higher percentage of a chance to hit that no shoot because you took an extra round that you probably didn't even need. Uh -huh. Right. Yep. So again, I can't tell you how many people I have shoot. I have seen shoot big stages <laughs> that have, or big matches that come in 
and try not to make mistakes. Guess what you do when you think about mistakes? You make those mistakes because you're thinking about those mistakes versus just yeah. shooting brown. Yeah. Um, I have a, so, I have a huge right, issue so. with that. People have a specific dot, what a dot looks like when they come in on a target. Bro, I want alphas and a red dot. I don't give a shit if it's still or not. If it's in the A zone and I shoot it, it's going to be there, right? So that confirmation where everybody's like, they got all these confirmation numbers and, and all this stuff, oh, dude, it's, it's too much to think about. Uh, it's it's sights and triggers to me. I don't care. It's sights and trigger. I know what the dot's supposed to look like. Put it in there, right? It's just a lot. And I'll say too that like what helped with some of that, like the mental stuff, like you're saying, like getting in and out of like making mistakes, and it's just our squad, us, everybody in the chat right here. Like we we all were just you know just being there for each other and like just trying to have a good time and laugh and like it it was like impossible to be upset about anything i feel like because we were just all just trying to have a good time and like it was one of the best squads i've ever shot with because we just we we're just having a good time dude. It, like Tom, that's it, it. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome because <laughs> paul is there fucking just absolute just monster of a clown dude just i mean he kept us laughing the whole time i shoot so much better when i'm laughing if i'm too serious or overthinking or upset yeah. or you know any of those things suck but if i'm laughing I shoot great. Like I just have to laugh and like, that's it. Then everything else just comes naturally. I'm the same. I've way, had bro. so many people tell me after that mess, they're like, y'all had the best squad. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, we really did though. Like, really? I mean, we so <laughs> did. And like, we were cutting up. I was, I like walked to the bathroom when we were over there next to the vendor. I walked to the, to the John and like, I looked at the squad and they were just like, I mean, they look so miserable and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, like we're having the time of our lives over here. And it was right, but it was right there before it rained. Oh, and I yeah. was like, man. And then oh. like, man, we set it off. Poor, it poor so June, cool. poor June, Kim, bro. I feel oh, so man. bad for that dude. <laughs> he, he didn't just, know what to that do. That guy <laughs> must have been like, what the shit did I do sign up <laughs> on this squad? <laughs> you never hey, will listen, again. Listen, it's uh, not my fault. It's not my fault. I tried to bring him in and cut the rug with that dude, have a good time, and all cut up and have fun, and he just wasn't having it. So I was like, sorry, it's dude. Crazy, this, you picked the wrong squad, son, because we we're a bunch of dumb asses over here. <laughs> <laughs> At the banquet, he let his hair down a little bit. It was, like, yeah. so oh, awkward man. to just, like, <laughs> talk to him. <laughs> During the match, he was, like, a jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was, like, the nice this guy at the bank. Yeah, yeah. Awesome dude. It's awesome funny. dude. <laughs> He's just focused. It's funny. Yeah. it's funny you actually say that, Tyler, about shooting better when you're laughing because my best stage of, of the match is actually one where there was an extended delay when I was the shooter. And Paul's actually got the camera and he's going around to the different ROs and getting close ups of their asses and then having everybody in the squad just like hump my phone and saying, Ryan's got to edit this. And I'm sitting there and I can't focus on the stage. I'm laughing at him. He's got me cracking up. <laughs> And then I go and shoot the stage and shoot all offers on the stage. And it's uh, yep. other squads. I see everybody tight and tense and no laughing and super serious. And I think that that really light mood and just having fun. We're all here to have fun. Like, I fucking mm -hmm. love shooting. I'm happy to be out there. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have a good group of guys, just like we had it at Nats, all of there laughing and cutting up. And it just it, it adds to it. And when you're light, you're having fun, you're, you're going to perform at the, your ability. I think well, that we just tells like, you that well, the only pressure comes from you. Right. So like, yeah. and that's the problem. It's like, we are the problem, right? Like this is why I told Daniel, dude, find that sense of calm, bro. Cause the only person that's doing that to you is you. There is nobody behind you. Come on, Daniel, this is worth a million bucks. Let's go. You gotta get it. Cause I'm like, dude, you're, you, we just lost a shit ton of money. Let's go have some fun. What the hell's it matter? Like we don't get shit, dude. I feel like I win quite a bit and I don't win shit. Like I literally mm -hmm. took third place at area eight and I got the same plaque I did. If I went lo to a local match here, you know what I mean? Like it's the same old plaque that I always get. So it's like, yes, that thing. So dude, it's like, dude, and, and that was a great time. match. But I don't. I, <laughs> I mean, got it's, the paper before too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right. It, it's just one of those things, man. It's it, it, you have to understand and put it in perspective. Like the only person that's putting you under that pressure is you, right? I mean, I literally just had this conversation with somebody, and they were talking about how you know this guy beat them, or like they're like, because I I remember like, man, you almost beat Nils, and I'm like, no. No, I didn't almost beat Nils. The stages beat me, right? Like Nils had the stages beat him. You know, the only guy that actually probably didn't have the stages beat him was Eric, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, and that, which makes a lot of sense because 
he shoots like that. You know, he shoots to shoot the stage. He doesn't, she doesn't give a shit who's behind him. He didn't, you know, everyone's making this big thing about him versus Christian. He didn't give a shit about Christian. No. I guarantee it. I guarantee I'll talk it. To him. He yes. didn't care. No, he didn't care it's never all. him versus anybody else. It's him versus the stage. And when you put that in your mind and you, that's why I don't look at scores. Cause it's never me versus the dude that's either in front of me or behind me. It's me versus the stage. And it, whatever my execution is, is what's going to give me that result. I have so, a question. So what if, uh, for people like me who have the, the issue of staying mentally focused, if I look at each individual stage as its own individual match, a uh, oh, million right? percent million percent like so when i walk up to every single stage every single stage is its own thing because I, th so in other words guess what we do in this sport guys and i don't know if many people know this but they probably should because it's about the easiest way to take this sport on we do the same shit over and over and over and over again, it's just disguised differently. So every entry for me is exactly the same. Every long distance target is exactly the same. It's prep, shoot, sights, trigger, exit, enter. It, it, we do the same thing over and over again. So the difference in one stage being successful and another stage not being successful is that you gave the harder stage, the harder things, more mental focus when you did the walkthrough. 90% of people's problem in this sport is the actual breakdown of the stage. And I don't mean stage planning. I'm talking about literally walking away from the stage instead of running it a hundred times, walk it, get your stage plan, walk away, close your eyes and walk that stage in your head. If you can't walk it with your eyes closed, you walking it with your eyes open, isn't actually getting it in your brain. You're not locking it in, right? It's like trying to memorize a speech by reading it. Good luck with that, right? Uh -huh. You ain't going to remember that shit. You got to walk away and say word for word what that is. Same thing with a with a stage plan. You have to be able to enter visually. You have to see it all, see the entry, see the exit, see the draw, see the grip. You have to be able to see all of that stuff before you get onto that stage so you can just subconsciously shoot it, right? Stage planning is the only thing I believe is actually subconscious in our sport. Like when I reload, I actually think reload because if I mentally think reload, guess what the fastest thing I'm going to be doing at that time is? reloading but if i just go reload guess what i'm gonna do first i'm gonna run which means the reload and the run is going to be both slow that's just the way i do things so seems to work so pretty wanna, well for me and my students <laughs> i want to say something we were talking about having like a really good time and i don't want like all your millions of followers to to look <laughs> at it like we just horsing around didn't give right. a shit right right because like we had the we had a we had the perfect balance of like you know, having a good time, but everybody was locked in. Yeah. Uh, me and Tyler had set up this like, you know, I wouldn't say elaborate, but I'm going to say elaborate like little scheme to fuck with you on day three. <laughs> and like, I'm like, I'm like look, let's tell Tom that we're going to reshoot eight. <laughs> and he's like, he like, me and you come up there. And I was like, so I look at Tyler and I'm like, oh, yeah, so totally. did you, uh, did you what did the, that lady say about reshoot date and you just looked at me and was like don't fucking start that shit with me today Put your ears <laughs> on and, walked off. and i'm like well i guess he's not having that but he didn't say anything about me fpsa in that one target on the stage so. <laughs>